Question 46 and 48. Calcium oxalate, a major component of kidney stones, oxalic acid, diprotic acid. <clears throat> so diprotic acid, uh, so it can uh, give uh, off uh, two hydrogens. And um, when we think of organic acids, uh, we think of uh, carboxylic acids, COOH. And we know that carboxylic acids are acidic because of the conjugate base. Uh, has resonance. So there are two equal resonance structures which we can uh, write for the um, for the conjugate base. These are the two equal resonance structures. There's no reason why we should be able to write one better than the other. And so uh, because of this gain in resonance energy, because of losing the proton, um, it gives it uh, this acidity. It's not that they're strong acids. It's not like HCl or H2SO4, but um, they're actually weak acids. Uh, these are carboxylic acids are, are relatively weak, but they are uh, the strongest of the organic acids. And so that's why they're so famous and, and, and they're also important in chemistry in general. So uh, this is about KSP. And, you know, KSP and uh, KW are... Are examples KSP and KW are examples of uh, constants, uh, equilibrium constants, which uh, use a, the product of the products, but do not use um, uh, the uh, the reactants. And the reason is that the reactants are so massive compared to the products that um, the reactants are incorporated into the constant. So KW is the water dissociation constant, which uh, we've seen problems of this already. And, um, and we know that the KW is only equal to hydrogen ion times OH minus uh, concentration. It, you don't use the water concentration because it's included in the, in the constant. And KSP is similar because KSP is only used for sparingly soluble um, uh, salts or, or uh, compound solids. Uh, sparingly soluble solids and because they have to be sparing uh, they're only sparingly soluble the, the the amount of solid that's left it's so uh, much in comparison to the solubility that uh, it's incorporated into the into the constant for the same reason so when we look at the reactions uh, it is a little strange the way uh, Acer wrote that third reaction because um, normally it's written the other way around with the solid on the left hand side and then uh, with the um, with the aqueous components uh, on the right hand side and then you give the KSP which is the solubility product of the products it's the uh, product of the products but um, you know they, they wrote it this way I guess uh, to show uh, the, the, the way the different reactions are or maybe they do, just wrote it that way because they like to reverse things on you <laughs> as soon as you get comfortable with whatever so anyway, question is, what is the minimum concentration of oxalate ion needed to form kidney stones? Well, first of all, we, you know, we use the uh, KSP, and we know that the KSP is equal to the concentration of the uh, products uh, that are solubilized, and, and that's going to be calcium times uh, the oxalate anion, um, which they uh, show you there. And so um, we, we do have the, um, the value for the KSP, which is... Uh, uh, 3 times 10 to the uh, minus 19 and um, and so we just have to divide it by the concentration of uh, calcium um, and that's given to us as 1.5 millimolar so that's uh, oh sorry I put 19 um, it's it's actually uh, 9 uh, 10 to the minus 9 and so uh, calcium which is 1.5 uh, millimolar so that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 okay because that's uh, minus 3,000 you know it's the opposite direction so um, millimolar and so 3 over 1.5 is 2 and then we have 10 to the minus 9 minus minus 3 so then that would be 10 to the minus 6 and that's equal to the um, oxalate um, concentration and so that's the answer the there is one little uh, problem or a little uh, typo is that uh, you can see that the con the concentration of calcium is given in units of moles uh, moles per liter and, and and the oxalate anion is given in units of moles per liter it means that you the um, the unit for the KSP should be moles per liter squared 
um, because it's m times m, so it should be moles per liter squared. But they just wrote moles per liter m, so uh, that that's just uh, likely a typo. So um, question uh, forty-seven: uh, Drinking uh, strong antacids to relieve indigestion produces kidney flows that is more alkaline than usual. Alkaline means more uh, basic than usual. Are kidney stones more likely to occur under these conditions? So. Um, so we just uh, have to look at the uh, reaction and, um, and we're going to be thinking about the reaction in terms of having base. And so strong antacids. Okay, so you said higher pH. If you, if so we're, gonna, we're, think, we're imagining that there's base. And what does base do? Bases are proton acceptors. So they're going to take away the protons. So look at the very first rea reaction that you are given and imagine that you remove protons. If you remove protons, that means the reaction is going to shift to the right. More of that's going to be uh, made. And if ever you, you doubt yourself about the application of Le Chatelier's principle, because of, obviously that's what we're using, Le Chatelier's principle, uh, think in reverse. Think, okay, if I add acid, if I add H+, what would the reaction do? It would shift to the left because the stress would be the H plus that would push it to the left. So I'm in a basic environment, an alkaline environment. So it's taking away H plus. So now um, it would do the opposite, which would be to shift to the right. So that would happen in the first reaction. But look at the second reaction. That would also happen in the second reaction. Second reaction, you're removing acid again. So it's shifting to the right again. So now we're down to the oxalate anion that is being produced. Um, excess of that. So because excess of that is being produced, you're going to shift to the right again and produce more solid. And uh, that would mean more kidney stones. So, um, so yes, uh, answer choice A is exactly correct. Question 48. Active transport removes some of the calcium ions from the kidneys so they can be used elsewhere in the body. And it in a kidney that contains a kidney stone, removing some of the calcium ions from the kidney fluid will. So removing calcium ions. Well, if you remove calcium ions, uh, then if you look at the third uh, reaction, uh, as calcium is being removed, then you're going to start uh, making more of the oxalate anion. And as you make more and more oxalate anion, then look at the second reaction, that reaction will also shift to the left because you have extra oxalate anion. And then because you're making more of that acid, you, in the reaction above it, the top reaction, that also will shift to the left. In other words, by just by the fact that you're removing the calcium, we have the reverse of what we just finished doing with the alkaline, and now we have a, sh a leftward shift all the way up, removing uh, the, pr the protons all the way, and uh, this will also increase the pH. So it increases the pH because it removes protons, but it does it in a different way that we did uh, previously. So uh, question 48, the answer is A. And uh, if you need to review uh, information about solubility and KSP, uh, this is uh, where you should do it. And um, uh, well, I mean, this is an option of where you can, where you can do it. And, um, and then uh, if you want to uh, review about Le Chatelier's principle, then it's uh, in Chem 9.9. .9.